Hello students, how are you all? Hope you are doing fine. This is Archana and I am your chemistry coach. Before we start today's discussion, let me brief about myself. I have done M.Tech from Jadavpur University and since then I have been coaching students like you who aspire to get admission in various prestigious colleges through JE or NEET. So, as an educator, I would love to create some positive impact into your lives. So, my dear students, today's topic for discussion is chemical bonding. And do you know why this topic is very important? This topic is very important because if you have clear understanding of chemical bonding, then the understanding of your entire chemistry becomes very easy. And it is also important for your academic and competitive examinations because many questions are asked from this chapter. Okay, we are going to learn about this in step by step manner. See, first of all, we will go through prerequisites means what are the things you need to know before starting this chapter. Then we will read what that means ki what is chemical bonding and after knowing what we will move to why. Why is chemical bonding in the nature? Then how? How are these bonds formed? And we will see that through some examples and then we will solve a couple of problems. Okay. Now moving back to prerequisites. My dear student, for knowing chemical bonding, you have to know the structure of atom. Let me brief that for you. You have to know that an atom has a nucleus which has positive charge because of the presence of proton. It also has neutron which is having no charge. And electrons, these electrons are revolving around the nucleus. So you have to know the electronic configuration. That means arrangement of electrons in an atom. Okay. So this was your prerequisite. Now the very important question is what is chemical bonding? To understand this chemical bonding, let us see few examples which we see in our day to day life. We all know that water is very important for us, oxygen is also important for us and sodium chloride or the salt, it enhances the taste of our food. Let me write water, oxygen and salt. So can you tell me what is the formula of water? It is H2O. Formula of oxygen? O2. And formula of salt is NaCl. Okay. Now let us see this water. So you can see that its formula is H2O which means two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom are held together with certain force of attraction. Okay. So that force of attraction is there between these atoms means they are having a bond. They share a bond. This is chemical bonding. Then look at this oxygen molecule. One molecule of oxygen has two atoms means they are bound together. So we can see here that there is also a chemical bonding. Again in sodium chloride we have one sodium atom and one chlorine atom and they are together means they are having certain bond between them. So these are the examples of few molecules which says that chemical bonding is found everywhere means these atoms let us suppose this is an atom this is also an atom so atoms don't like to stay alone they bind with other atoms and form molecule see this is a molecule now a question must be popping into your intelligent mind that why do these atoms combine what is the reason behind their combination so let us understand this with an example let us consider two situations which we often face. In one situation we are very angry means that we are having very higher energy level we are trembling. So at that time if somebody provokes you do you think you will be stable you will not get disturbed no we will get disturbed. 
so this is a condition where we are not stable we are having very higher energy level and in another situation we are very calm so if at that situation if someone tries to provoke us then also we do not get disturbed so in this situation our energy level is low and we are quite stable so by stability i mean or we mean that it is a condition when we are not ready to get disturbed so when i am very angry or you are very angry that time we get disturbed so we are having very high energy level we are not stable and when we are calm we are having lower energy level and we are stable this happens with atoms also when atoms are having higher energy level they are not stable so they prefer to obtain lower energy and become stable so this is the reason behind chemical bonding means bonding between atoms atoms which are having higher energy level try to lower it and then become stable so they have an option to become a molecule lower the energy and become stable so this was the answer of your why now coming to how how these atoms combine so for understanding how we have several theories out of which we are going to study four of them cosell lewis approach vesper theory valence bond theory and molecular orbital theory so the first theory is your cosell lewis approach this approach was given by cosell and lewis when bohr's atomic model was discovered so cosell and lewis saw that an atom is having positive charge and there are several electrons revolving around the nucleus but only the outer electrons are participating in bond formation and do you know the reason because in the center we are having positive charge and these are electrons which are negatively charged so there is a very strong force of attraction because of this nucleus to an electron but this force of attraction decreases with distance so this uh, force of attraction is felt minimum at this place means in the valence shell so the electrons in the valence shell participate in bond formation so cosell and lewis saw that there is a part in the atom which does not participate in bond formation and there is a part which participates in bond formation so let us write a name for the internal part means the nucleus and the internal electrons which do not participate in bond formation so the name given was kernel and these electron which participates in bond formation are known as valence electrons this is valence electron okay so this was cosell and lewis approach now cosell and lewis gave a dot structure means a way to represent an element for representation of an element we just have to write the symbol and represents its valence electron by putting the number of dots example if we are going to write oxygen so what is the symbol o and how many electrons are there in the valence shell there are six electrons so let me put six dots so this is the way we can represent an element through lewis dot structure then cosell and lewis saw that in our periodic table there are several elements out of which few of the elements do not participate in bond formation that means they are very stable and looking at their electronic configuration they found a pattern what was that pattern they saw that except helium every atom has eight electrons in their outermost shell which shows that if an atom is having eight electrons in the outermost shell it is quite stable so they gave a rule known as octet rule which means that if an atom is not having eight electron it can obtain eight electron and become stable so what are the ways to obtain eight electrons there are two ways first one is by the transfer of electron and the second way is by the sharing of electrons so let us understand this with an example so let us take an example of sodium sodium is a metal having 11 electrons so what is the configuration 2 8 1 so it has one electron in the outermost shell if it loses one electron what will happen sodium will become 
sodium ion and see the configuration it is 2 8 it has lost one electron look at the configuration of chlorine its configuration is 2 8 7 so it has seven electrons in the valence shell so if someone gives one electron to chlorine it will become quite stable so let us suppose that sodium is transferring one electron to this chlorine so chlorine becomes chloride and see the configuration 2 8 8 so we can see now that we have one sodium ion which is positively charged and one chloride ion which is negatively charged and these two ions are together and oppositely charged ion feel a force that is known as electrostatic force and the bond between them is known as ionic bond because they are formed between two ions so this is your ionic bond now let us see another example let us take two chlorine atoms so each chlorine atom is having seven electrons and they both require one electron each for obtaining octet so neither this chlorine wants to lose electron nor this chlorine wants to lose electron so what will they do they have only one option left that is by sharing the electron they can obtain octet so this chlorine will share one electron with the neighboring now it has eight electrons this chlorine will also share one electron with the neighboring chlorine and now it also has eight electrons. Now they have become a molecule. See, now this is a compound or say a molecule of chlorine and this type of bond formed by sharing of electron is known as covalent bond. So I hope whatever has been taught is easily understood by you all. Detailing will be done in the next class. Hoping to see you all in my next class. Bye-bye. Take care.